Welcome to the next video in the Suggestion App course. This is a complete course where we'll build a .NET 6 Blazor server application with MongoDB from the ground up. There are three things you need to know before we get started. First, this is part of a series, and this isn't the first video in the series. If you're just starting out, you should check out the playlist that's linked in the description to start from the first video in the series. Second, this course is actually a paid course. MongoDB sponsored it so you can put the videos on YouTube for free. Check out the link in the description to sign up for MongoDB Atlas for free to thank them if you haven't already. Third, you can also buy this course on imtimcorey.com. The link is in the description. Buying this course will get you all the lessons right away, the source code for each lesson, a certificate of completion, offline access, and more. It also helps sponsor more free content. The video will be the same as it is on YouTube, so feel free to watch the free version if you want to. Okay, let's jump into today's video. Note there may be more than one lesson in this video, since some lessons are short. Let's talk about the data design for our application. What we need to do is, is pull out what pieces of data do we need and how do they fit together? So let's, we have, we have two different places we could start. We could start with the, the simple ones. For example, categories or statuses. Or we can start with the more complex ones like suggestion or user. Let's start off with the simple ones, get them out of the way. So we have the category. We need, we're gonna need, and let's, let's not worry about IDs, okay? Because we know that every record needs to have an identifier. Or at least we should know that, hopefully. So every record will have an identifier that we can uniquely reference that record by. But let's talk about the other data we need. So we need to have a category name and we need to have a category description. Next up, we need to talk about the statuses because I think that's all we need for categories is name and description. And statuses, we should probably have a same status name and status description. I don't think there'll be a whole lot more than that in our, our status or our category. So let's talk now about uh, a little bit more complex topic, and that will be the, the user data. So as a user, what information do we need to capture about that user? Well, we need to capture um, their first name and last name. We need to capture the, the name that they want to show everyone. Let's call it the display name. So that will be things like, you know, maybe I call myself T. Corey. Maybe I want to obfuscate even more and call myself, you know, Sir, you know, Sir learns a lot. You know, something like that. Where we could have a display name that might not be their actual first and last name. And that's important because we don't want users to feel like they're being um, highlighted in a way that would be inappropriate. Meaning um, if they have their actual name on it, maybe they don't feel comfortable saying certain things or maybe they feel like they could be targeted in some way for the suggestions they make. We don't want that. We want this to be a safe place where they can feel safe making suggestions. So we'll have a display name as well. So the first and last name, that'll be more internal whereas the display name will be displayed for everyone to see. Also internal will be their email address. We'll need this for verification who they are and potentially down the road for sending them information on, hey, your suggestion has been approved or your suggestion has been completed or things like that. So that again is not a version one thing, but that might be useful. So we'll capture that from the beginning. Now, since we're having this person authenticate through Azure Active Directory B2C, we can capture all this information from their login account. But we also need to capture beyond that, their identifier from Azure Active Directory. So we need to have their object ID. This is the ID coming from Active Directory, from B2C. So 
that identifier is not the same identifier as the one we will give it from in MongoDB. So it'll be a separate identifier for MongoDB, but this way we can always link the same person to the same account. That way, if a person changes their first name, their last name, their display name, and their email address, we still know who they are. And that still connects all their data from the past to their new, new identity. You know, the identity hasn't really changed. It's just the visible details of it that have changed. So next up after email address, there's a couple of things that we need to track about a user. One is the suggestions that they create, maybe authored suggestions. These are the suggestions that they have created. They said, hey, I want to do this. I want you to, this is my suggestion. We want to keep a list of those things. The, the next thing is we need to keep a list of the things they have voted on. So voted on suggestions. That way we know, notice this, this is why I still have the design up here, that that blue outline of the upvote indicates they've already voted on this suggestion. Whereas the white outline indicates they have not yet voted on the suggestion. So that comes from knowing who you are and what you have voted on. So we'll need to know that. That way we can track, hey, here's the things that, that you have voted on. And here are the things you've authored. Now, with MongoDB, we could put the entire object in the authored suggestion and in the voted on suggestions. We're not going to do that. We're going to limit those objects to just the data that's really necessary. For example, the voted on suggestions, that will probably just be the ID of the suggestions we voted on. Maybe the, the title as well, but probably just the ID. That way we can say, hey, you vote on 10 suggestions. And if we really need to pull a list up, we have the IDs to link to a suggestion table or collection. But we don't, store all that data there because we don't want to duplicate data we're not actually going to use. So that's the, the user data and what I would recommend for capturing just information about the users. Okay. So let's talk about the big one. And that is the suggestion data. And this is where all of this data on the screen is going to show up. So we need to have the actual suggestion. I know it seems redu redundant to have suggestion and suggestion. It's kind of like the title, but it really is the, the actual suggestion, the thing that they're, that they are saying. That's the, the 75 character thing that's going to show up in this main list here. And then we need to have the description as well. And that's the, the more in-depth explanation of, of what they want to see in this suggestion. We need to have the date created. Now we could go in more depth here and say, well, we want the date created and, and every time it's been changed. We could do that. We're not going to, we don't need to capture that information yet. Maybe in the future we do, but I don't think that's something we need to do. So we'll just have date created and call that good. We need to know what category it's going to be in. So we have a list of categories, which by the way is up here. We'll link that whole category, name and description and ID right here. Then you're also going to need to have the author who created the suggestion, which is a user, but we don't need to have all this stuff. So we probably just need to have the object ID and display name because we're going to show off. Let's go down here. We're going to show off the display name where we say author screen name. So if we have that in the suggestion under author, we can just show it instead of linking to another collection that saves us quite a bit of computational power. So we just basically duplicate that information. Now, does that mean that if we change the display name in the user object, it's going to change in the suggestions. No, it doesn't. Which means that if we want that to happen, 
we have to, when this change happens, goes through and update all the suggestions by that author, which we could do. We're not going to do it for version one. So if you create, if your uh, username is uh, tcory1 and you make a, cre you create a suggestion and then down the road, you decide, you know what? I'm tired of tcory1. Let's create tcory2 and make a new suggestion. That suggestion will be, have the author name of tcory2, but the original suggestion will still have an author name of tcory1 for now. But we have the ability in the future to run an update script and just update those to the latest version. So it's not something I'll worry about with a duplication. And I know that the place where the, the information that's the, the root information or the primary information, the source of truth, that will always be the user object for the user information. So this author will point to the user object or point to a user um, ID and then also display name, but it's not the source of truth for that display name. The user object is. Next up, we'll have the um, user votes. So this is a list of all the people. Let's go back up here. Like this one has 19, it's a little small here. It's got 19 votes on this suggestion, including the user who's currently logged in. So to have a, we're gonna have to have a list of who has voted on this suggestion, their ID, and that's it. Because we can count how many IDs are in that list. And that's how we get the number of votes. And if you're logged in, we'll have your user ID. We can compare that to the list and find out if your ID is in that list. And if it is, then we'll say, yes, you vote on this. And if it's not, we'll say, no, you haven't voted on this yet. So that's user votes. We'll also have the suggestion status because notice on the right-hand side of some of these suggestions as completed or upcoming, we have other status as well or no status. So we'll have a, a, uh, a link here that has the suggestion information or the status information for the suggestion. So what's the status of this? as well as owner notes. So when you make a suggestion, let's scroll down here to one, where it says completed, and then it has some notes down below. And that's a little small, but it just notes. Well, we need to be able to put some information there, including maybe a link to the, the video that was created that this is now completed because of. So that those notes are going to go into this owner notes section. Now, when you create a suggestion and you say suggest, what happens? It doesn't go up here and get displayed. It gets put into a page we haven't seen yet because we haven't designed it yet, but it's a page where the admin can approve or deny the page. Well, that indicates that we have a... Uh, a field that says approved for release. And that's probably a Boolean that says yes or no, true or false. And it probably starts off as false because it's not yet been approved for release. We also have a couple more Booleans. One is that we have rejected this. So maybe we don't approve it for release, but that doesn't mean it's rejected. So some suggestions might not ever make the list because the fact that, let's say you post code and say, can you fix this? That's not a valid suggestion. Therefore, we're gonna reject that or say, this is not a valid suggestion. So therefore we need to have a way to say rejected because it just saying not approved for release isn't enough because then it will stay in the list of all the ones not yet approved for release. And we have to indicate in some way that it's not approved for release but we're also not going to approve it for release. Therefore, we have a rejected flag. And the final flag we have is if we want to clean up this list. Remember, we're going to clean up the old stuff that's going to clog it up and make it grow infinitely. We're going to clean it down to the most relevant stuff. So if a suggestion doesn't get a vote for six months and it seems like the community is not interested in that topic, 
we will archive it. Well, we need to have a flag here for archived. So those are the big data points that I see coming out of the suggestion object. The things that we need to know in order to have a suggestion object. We need to know about the title or the suggestion itself and the description and what category it's in, what the status is, how many people have voted and who has voted and who the author is, when it was created and what the notes are, if any, from the admin and what the state is in our site, whether it's been, it's pending approval or it's been rejected or it's active or it's been archived. So all that stuff comes down to this set of data right here. So this is our data design for our application. It's pretty standard and straightforward and it's not that big. And really, we don't have to create much bigger than this. In fact, I think that's pretty much all the data we'll create for our application. Because then when it comes to MongoDB, we don't have to even create a table structure. We can just say, hey, store a suggestion object. Even though it has objects inside of it, it's gonna go, no prob. I'll go ahead and put that in as an object, as a, as a document. And then when you ask for it, it's gonna bring back a whole document and populate your model. So be really quick and easy to do. We don't have to worry about, hey, is this a, a string field with this many characters? MongoDB is gonna take care of all that for us. It's a different way of designing a database. So with that, that's all we have to do for our data structure. We have planned out our data design, which means we've completed the complete wood framework, the walkthrough, the open up, the requirements, the user interface design, the logic design, and now the data design. From here, we can start actually building our application. Now we have a good idea of where we're going and the major landmarks or steps along the way.